Hello, yes, Operation Voice. I hope you like my logo, the screenshot at the beginning of the video. That will accompany uh, bulletins, letterheads, leaflets that will be going out. I'm going to be the voice for the forgotten, beleaguered, white working class of Kensington and Fairfield. That's right. I make this video after um, studying in great uh, detail the marked register for Kensington and Fairfield and the amount of people that didn't bother to vote is staggering. I couldn't believe it. Whole streets haven't voted and then the end of the street two or three, two of two or three have voted. It really is unbelievable. Now, I believe they're not voting because they don't see they have a voice. No one's listening to them in most cases, that's right. So I'm going to be their voice, right? The logo will go out, as I say, on letterheads, leaflets, bulletins, whatever. And I will get to know the people of Kensington and Fairfield. And I will be at their beck and call whenever they want to talk to me or whenever they want to discuss issues in the area that the local council or councillors aren't dealing with. I will be there only too ready to help them. And after reading that uh, marked register, it really has opened my eyes in a positive and also in a negative way. A negative way in the sense that people have just given up. Well, we've got to put that fight back in them. We've got to give them a voice. I'll be their voice, right? Also, on a positive note, is that if you do mobilise those that didn't vote, then the Labour and all the rest of them, they've had it. Once you give the people of any ward, not just Kensington and Fairfield, a voice, confidence and a belief that you're going to listen to them and deliver. Nothing can stop it. What did he say, Winston Smith? George Orwell's 1984. If there's hope, it lies in the proles. And that is true. Trust me, it's true. Also as well, just going off topic, why we have to get back into the communities around Britain, talking to people and being their voices. I'm looking at all the videos on YouTube. How many videos has Paul Joseph Watson made? Stefan Molyneux, Goldie, Lauren Southern, Penny Petty, Bo Martin, Selner, Millennial Woes, Mark Colette, Dr. David Duke, right? Tommy Robinson, Tommy Robinson, that's right. How many have they made? Christ, you, you probably couldn't count them. Also, how many man hours have been uh, watched in these videos? I bet it's millions. I, I wouldn't be surprised if millions of man hours have been watched, watching all these hundreds, if not thousands of videos that are now on YouTube. I will guarantee you, you'd be shocked. I would. Not that I intend to waste my time adding up all the man hours of all these videos. Don't think I could. All the same, where's it taken us? What's it changed? What's it given us? Press like, share, comment and all sit there and do nothing. You see, what's happened now? The old white nationalist movement that was based on activism and winning council seats, it's been replaced by a white nationalist entertainment industry and even my videos will become part of that and that's why I've taken them down, right? All this on the internet isn't helping our cause, it's taken us nowhere. If it is, then show me, show me the successes and where it's helped us, where? How many more videos? Paul Joseph Watson, M Millennial Woes, Stefan Molyneux, there's too many. Red Ice Radio, forgot about them. They've done God knows how many. How many more videos do they have to make before people come on board? And also, most of the topics are all nonsense about getting a traditional wife like Millennial Woes or Dr. David Yu talking about the mob. The Jews were controlling the mafia or something or the secret behind communism or God knows what. Or Nick Griffin's latest nonsense about the gassing in Salisbury. It was a... It was all set up, was it, by Theresa May and MI5? Is that what you're saying? I couldn't really grasp it. Is that what you're saying? You know, but uh, all the same, where's that taking us? Well, nowhere. It's just spoon feeding your own ego, as well as Jack Sen probably patting you on the back. Oh, great, Dan Nick. And Daph Nick falling for it. It's taken us nowhere, or books on Reconquista, the 100 year project. 
before you can ever redeem yourself, Nick Griffin, you've got to put your hand up and admit what you've done or allowed to be done, right? You've allowed the BMP to be destroyed, taken from you. You allowed people's private and personal details, the membership list, to be passed over to our enemies and then blasted all over the internet. You need to apologise, then you need to get back in here and do what is only right. But you're not going to, are you? So you writing your silly articles will never redeem you, right? Never. But anyway, getting back into... The communities in and around Britain uh, represent the forgotten, beleaguered, white working class is the way forward. I'm going to stop the ball rolling in Kensington and Fairfield. I won't be making endless, endless, endless videos because there's no point and I'll just become part of the white nationalist entertainment in industry. I want to be part of the white nationalist activist community that we once were, right? That's what we what we once were. We were an activist community based on activism, street activism. That's how we won all those council seats. I mean, ask yourself this. What's more beneficial to white nationalism? A council seat win or Nick Griffin's article on the gassing in Salisbury or Millennial Woes talking about getting a traditional wifey, which he still hasn't got and never will. Or Mark Colette, whatever he talks about, right? Or Tommy Robinson getting arrested umpteen times and having umpteen bust-ups with Asians and Muslim paedophiles and whatever. Well, exactly, what's the more important? Winning a council seat or all, all them? Well, exactly, it goes without saying and that's where we've got to get back in there, right? It's no good me doing videos on Tommy Robinson or anyone. It's pointless. Oh, Mark Colette or Millennial Woes. If you don't understand what's happening now, you never will, right? The way forward is in the local community, especially if you live there, or any uh, these communities in and around Britain, get in there, start talking to the forgotten, beleaguered, white working class, give them a voice, right? Because that's all they're looking for, is a voice, someone to listen to them, someone to stand up for them, and someone to speak out for them as well. And that's what I'm gonna be the voice of the forgotten, beleaguered, white working class, of Kensington and Fairfield. I'm gonna go in there with my logo on letterheads, bulletins, leaflets, whatever. I'm gonna to talk to them, I'm gonna find out. I've got a whole year now to plan this. I'm really looking forward to it. I've got some amazing ideas and some good individuals I'm talking to uh, that are coming up with some good ideas. Uh, we're gonna put it into practice. This isn't going to happen overnight. So you lot watching your videos on YouTube, if you believe it's gonna be an instant fix because you've just watched Paul Joseph Watson or Millennial Woes or Stefan Molyneux and oh the, you know there's that many to mention Red Ice Radio and the latest ones now Brittany Pettibone she's the latest star now and there'll be another one something some will happen to someone else they'll get attacked or banned or sacked from the job like that city banker next minute they'll be uh, you know um, propelled into stardom status by the white nationalist entertainment industry on YouTube and where's it taking us? Well, nowhere. Where's all that taking us save the white race? Go, go round to any community in Britain, right? Go round and say that. It'd be laughed at. It'd, be, it'd just be a joke, you know. So come on. We've got to be the voice for our people, the forgotten and beleaguered white working class. Okay, thank you.